our industry is ever improving. We started by just inserting a single gene and seeing the benefits of this just single gene creating a protein at the cellular level. And like Ines was alluding to, it's a very natural process. This is a process which evolution has taken us through since the beginning of, of organisms. Gene therapy is a natural process by which we change, sometimes through uh, viral integration and sometimes by our environment. And now, not only can we deliver genes to cells, we can modify your cells outside of your body. That's what they're doing with CAR T therapy and cancer. They're actually taking your immune system out, these T cells, they're modifying them, they're putting them back in, and then they attack the cancer. So what we can do here is quite unlimited, but of course where we want to go is we want to start treating aging. Aging is a complex disorder, and so it's not going to be a single gene cure, and so we're trying to build now our arsenal to help you live longer through this type of technology. This type of technology is revolutionary. We're talking taking a therapy maybe once in your lifetime, or every five or 10 years. These are all uh, targets for gene therapy today in biological aging. My company, BioViva, I'm always so proud of this. I call it my third child. We've come a long ways uh, since the early days in 2015 where we un uh, didn't know that we were going to disrupt a whole industry by saying if these gene therapies work, should we should be taking them. And we are still taking them. <laughs> But what we did is we went back to the drawing board. We work with AAV, which we think is a fantastic delivery method for uh, gene therapy. If you have a single or small amount of genetic material you need to put in. But what we're building now is delivery methods that will put in larger payloads. So I have taken four gene therapies since the company started, but if we just targeted three of the gene therapies that I'm interested in, we want to put those into one delivery method and get them to you in one treatment. One third the dose will save a lot of money, and in our studies, this was redosable. Where we're at right now, where have we come since all of these years? Uh, we just got our response back for our pre-IND for dementia. A lot of people have been following our work there. Thank you. No, it's, it's actually huge. Uh, th these few people know how big that is for a small company to actually get to this stage. So we worked through uh, medical tourism uh, because it can give ethical and moral access and give people dignity who need access to drugs. And we did an investigator-led study in which five patients were dosed with a dual gene therapy intranasally. And based on that, we are streamlining towards clinical trials. So that's news for this conference that I haven't had before. <laughs> Our CMV vector, uh, which I talked about briefly on the last slide, because I know a lot of people are not highly technical here, we're going to try to, uh, we're going to actually apply for a pre-IND for that one uh, for sarcopenia in an aging population. So that's where we're at now. Now, always I try to do one great reveal. Everyone here knows that I am a huge proponent to patient access. I'm a patient myself. I became my company's first patient, and I want to make sure that people live longer and better. And so we work with medical tourism. We cannot give gene therapies. A lot of people reach out to us for that, but we can assess data. And we have a 30-patient population coming up, but I got to take some of the data of 10 patients and what happened to them after they did gene therapy to lengthen their telomeres. So these are the 20th percentiles shortest telomeres, which are really consequential to human health. So you're seeing the first uh, information, uh, re reports coming out on what happened to these patients, and th this, all of this data is almost five years old now. We have to follow these patients for a really long time. So I hope you look forward to that paper coming out. It'll have a lot more data than this. But for these people, we put literally years on their shortest telomeres. And that has an impact on things like infectious disease and all over health. But it's just one gene that we work with. And if you want to learn more about telomerase reverse transcriptase, ask Bill Andrews. <laughs> Everyone knows that's like his super specialty. He's like my, my uh, super superhero there. 
The second company I'm working on is Genorosis, and we're going after glaucoma as our first uh, candidate. We're working on a gene that actually can regenerate neurons, and it will have application for spinal injury and uh, probably neurodegenerative disease as well. But when we think of longevity, we often think of how we look. And actually, being able to look and see how we look is really important. Glaucoma is considered the silent killer of eyesight. 80 million people will go blind from this, and they won't know they have it until generally it's too late. Most drugs that we look at in this space work on interocular pressure, meaning minimizing the pressure that's causing the damage to the nerve. But this is actually already a well-known path, and so what we want to do is regenerate those nerves and keep you from losing your sight. With this, it's also a gene is inserted into a vector delivery method, and then that is, yes, everybody can go, ooh, now, is injected into your eye. But these type of interocular injections, into vitriol, actually, are done routinely, and they take only a matter of minutes, and we hope that people will choose for that rather than losing their eyesight. <sighs> Now, I've sort of front-loaded you with a whole lot of information, but the first thing and that I want you to think of when you think of me <laughs> is patient advocacy. Because all of the development of these drugs is all very fine, it's all very fancy, and it all is very high-tech. But it's really the patients that benefit from these drugs that matter to me. The regulatory system has been very slow to move these type of drugs forward. As a matter of fact, we don't really have any really good candidates for regenerative medicine yet in the system, except for drugs that unbeknownst sort of became uh, beneficial and which people are using off-label for longevity, which is great. I am a proponent of a pre-regulatory route. I actually work globally on this. I am engaging four countries right now. And this pre-regulatory route is something I would like to have right here in the United States, giving people the dignity to try new drugs. Did you know that your medicine, once prescribed by your doctor legally, is over 15 years old? Most innovative medicine doesn't get to humans, not because it's not good, not because it doesn't have good data, it's because small companies can't afford to get it to clinical trials. And we ask the private industry, we constantly have our hands out asking them for money to get us there. So what I want to build is a pre-regulatory route that sort of mimics medical tourism. Because medical tourism is over a $400 billion industry, but it only benefits very few people. So with this new and pre-regulatory route, we can actually de-risk the US FDA. By giving moral and ethical access with a review board oversight, we can get patients treated, and instead of coming to the US FDA with 1,000 mice data, we could actually come with human data. Right now, drug failure in the regulatory system costs $2.8 billion dollars, sorry, 2.8 billion dollars, and it has a 94% failure rate. Would you want to invest in that? How about ethical access for patients and allowing medical doctors to work directly with their patients and choosing drug candidates that are more promising of what's available already? And learning patient to patient, we can iterate more quickly and create better drugs. And the cost? Everybody asks me the cost of gene therapy. Everyone's holding their breath. What does gene therapy cost in medical tourism, the way it is done now? And how can we reduce that cost? This is a comparison between medical tourism and regulated drugs in the US. A regulated drug to treat one eye, if you needed a gene therapy today or you would go blind, is $425,000. In medical tourism, it's between $60,000 and $70,000. That's a lot of money. But you could see how by treating the biggest medical unmet need, biological aging, we can bring these numbers down really quite quickly. 
And if your child today is born with spinal muscular atrophy, you're looking at a bill between two and five million dollars or they lose their life. Medical tourism is a fraction of the cost. And this is the type of industry that we could actually build on the front end of regulations, helping more patients, getting nonprofits to pay for your treatment, and eventually getting grantors and government to pay for your aging. The stakeholders go anywhere from the patient, the medical doctor, governments, investors, universities, biotech companies, of course, pharmaceutical companies, and you. Because whether you believe it or not, you will be a patient eventually. So you need access to the best medicine in the world. We are working so hard to bring these very expensive therapies down in cost so that everyone can afford them. So insurance companies will pay for them. And you could help us and give me more work to do if you just scan that QR code and you go and sign our petition. This is free to you. This costs you nothing. It creates work for me, so especially if you don't like me, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> And these petitions actually help us engage governments all around the world. Already, we're talking to four different governments, four different options for you when you need it. This is one of my favorite quotes lately. I always get hung up on a quote. I think everyone who knows me knows that. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We have to let our egos down. We cannot do, we cannot drive for money. We cannot drive to best another company. We need everyone in this room. All of these technologies that you're learning about during this conference are going to be integral in curing aging. So don't silo yourself to one approach. Demand that people work together. Don't let them put their ego before your life. <laughs>